Morning. Morning. So we're on our way to Amazing Animals Inc. over in St. Cloud. It's about half an hour outside of Orlando, yep. from Disney property. Um, and hopefully we're going to get to meet some animals today. Yeah. Shall we go? Yeah, let's, let's do it. Try. So we're searching for Amazing Animals Inc. Um, just to warn you, it's, it's a house. It doesn't look like a big attraction like Busch Gardens or SeaWorld. Um, so if you're worried it's not the right place, it is the right place. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, um, and there is a sign outside. So we're gonna head in now. Let's do this, let's do it. is a little savannah monitor like I said they're native to Africa and I like to start with him because of how we got him so he was actually sold at a pet store when he was about that big cute little lizard and people bought him on the spot they did absolutely no research Aww. and no clue that the little lizard they bought was going to grow to be a good size <laughs> lizard um, so it's so important we stress to people to do your research before you get a pet absolutely. pet stores don't care and then it's warm in Florida so a lot of people will do this and then just let things go so we have a lot of invasive species in Florida they do like our climate um, which again is not good because something like this is from Africa, not from Florida. Um, so he's a sweetie, I handle him every day so he knows us, so I say you can train everything including reptiles, right buddy? This has been her, her favorite hiding spot recently. And then I get mulch all over the place because of this. Right lady? So yeah, she is a red-tailed boa constrictor. They're native to South America. And they get that name because that red, uh, red on their tail, obviously. Um, but beautiful color pattern. So she actually is going to like yeah. to be up in the trees a little bit more too. So they can camouflage really well. And she is only three years old. They do get about uh, six to 12 feet full grown and can live 20 to 30 years. So she's still got a ways to go. And all of our snakes are constrictors. So they're all big, uh, big strong, muscular snakes. Nothing's venomous. It's not going to kill you if it bites you. We would not be handling a venomous snake like this. Yeah. Um, but we do like to let people, you know, get to meet snakes up close because they do have such a bad rep. So many people think they're just Definitely. slimy and gross and out to get you. And it's really not the case. They're actually more afraid of us than we are of them typically. So if you leave them alone, they leave you alone. We do have quite a few of them here in Florida. I don't know if you've seen any wild snakes out and about. Black Never. racers? No. 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 I thought I did the other day, but it was just a lizard with a blue tail. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, oh. Blue, blue tail skink. Those yeah. are pretty cool. Um, yeah, so she just likes to hang out. Do you guys want to pet her? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Would you just hear? Yeah. Oh, so soft as well. Right? Very soft. Not slimy. People no. think, oh, it's wet looking. I'm like, no, but they're not at all. It's amazing. Do you want to try a holder too? Oh, I'll go for it. You go for it? Yeah. Alright, you're just like a nice warm tree branch. You just put both your hands out and she's really going to hold on to you more so than you have to hold on to her. And then just kind of cruise around you. She really does, doesn't she? Yeah. yeah. You feel all those muscles that are going. I like your Ooh, hands. You don't know what to do with them. I know. I'm just a bit, a bit awkward. <laughs> yeah, you can just hold her. She'll just kind of cruise around. She likes, so likes to come out and explore. <laughs> I think you like... Is there rattlesnakes out in Florida? Oh yeah. Yep, we've got pygmy and diamondbacks here. They're, they're the snakes that scare me the most, I think. Yeah, and, and venomous snakes, I have a great respect for them. Um, I don't like to mess with them. I do see them out. <laughs> we've had a coral snake in our backyard before. Um, but there's only five species, I believe it is, of venomous snakes in Florida, and there's over 40 native species. So, so many people, are just it's automatically a venomous snake, and really, most likely it's not. Yeah. Um, in fact, fun fact with our pine snake, so, Rattlesnakes obviously rattle their tail. That noise, other animals know if something dangerous is around, so we're going to leave this area alone, right? Yeah. And people think that way too. So the pine snake is not venomous at all. He's completely harmless. Um, he rattles his tail. He shakes it so oh, quick yeah. that it buzzes. Um, he does not have a rattle on the end of it, but it just zzzz. He shakes it so fast because he's mimicking a rattlesnake. It's kind of so, like a disguise. Yes, so it's crazy to me how smart some of them are. So a lot of our, our snakes like to look or sound or act like venomous snakes when really they're not, but it's actually, when people see it, they go, oh, I'm gonna kill it because it's dangerous, and usually it's not, and even if it is venomous, it's not trying to get you, so just leave it alone. Most <laughs> people get bit because they're messing with them. Like, don't hurt them, don't mess with them, just let them do their thing. They eat all the rodents, I love having snakes around. So you're just super chilled. You're handcuffed now yeah. Yeah. by a snake. Right, good bracelet. Right? <laughs> you want to hold her? Um, no, I'm right, thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, I'm just like, like watching. It's okay. They're not for everyone. I totally yeah. get it. I do love the car on, on the tail. Right? Yeah, she's such a beautiful snake. And I love, if you get her right in the light, it's like a almost pink hue she's got. It's just so pretty. 
Oh, smiling me. I know, you're not smiling around, do you? <laughs> Only a mouse. We've been in Disney the last few days. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh she's gonna eat you. Mickey Mouse. She only eats once a week, so she had a rat a couple of days ago. She's pretty fat and happy still. That's absolutely stunning. Right? Here you go, all unwrap her from there. <laughs> there you go. Very placid as well. Very. Oh. I just yawned. What is? <laughs> the, the middle one. What was that? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, um, the middle snake just yawned. I, just, oh, I presume it's a yawn. Or a stretch. He yawns a lot. Just a lazy little I just snake. love that a snake yawns. That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? Watching us. Uh, we do have our big girls on uh, behind us here. These are our big oh, furry two. pythons. Yeah, there's two of them. And they're both albino, so they have no dark pigmentation. They normally look more like you know the browns, like what the red tail has. Um, but people have these as pets. And in Florida, it's actually illegal to do that now. Burmese pythons are the third largest snake in the world. They get about 18 feet full grown. We have uh, come in with U.S. Fish and Wildlife to have her. And uh, we have her for education purposes because she was being non reusable she actually flew into the side of someone's car apparently, smashed her face really hard. They did take her to a rehabber, uh, but unfortunately they noticed that she had a dead left eye because of that impact, so she can't see or fear from her left side anymore. So a black cup eared marmoset. Um, both these guys, unfortunately, people had as house pets, um, which is not a good idea. Keeping them in a bird cage in your house is, uh, yeah, not, not the best setup for them. So we got the call for each of them. We've had them for uh, probably almost two years. We got Bingo first. Um, and then a few months later, we got to take a Marvin to his head yes, and our hope was for them to be friends. It's very social in the wild, right? So this little roly-poly kid is Bam Bam. Um, so he is a striped skunk, and they are found right here in North America. They're kind of all over, um, doing well, and they're great for the ecosystem because they're little foragers. So they've got these lovely nails, if you notice, cool. that they like to dig and uh, eat pretty much anything they can, so bugs, rodents, fruits, veggies. Um, but people breed them as well and do a surgery to remove their scent glands um, so they can't spray you anymore and they sell them as a pet, which is what happened with Bam Bam. So he cannot stink, um, but that also means he can never be in the wild because he doesn't have his number one defense mechanism. So this is Ari, she's our female, Rio, my little brat here, this is the male. Uh, so they are a small little wild cat native to South America. Um, and we have them here as a little conservation mission because in the wild, unfortunately, we are seeing declines in their numbers with Joffrey's cats. And a big reason for that is because of people. Um, habitat loss, conflicts with farmers, getting hunted for the beautiful fur coat they have, the cars, um, are all out of the issues that they're facing. And here in the United States, the big zoos don't have them because she's full grown. She's three years old and five and a half pounds. So they're not a very big, impressive exhibit cat. Totally get it. We don't want people thinking this is a fun house cat they can go get. Um, because let me tell you, they do eat raw meat. They crunch your chicken bone like it's nothing. Her nails are like little daggers. If she, if she were to get me instead of this thing, it, it's yeah, it's not going to feel good. So they uh, tear up everything, semark on everything, and they're not going to snuggle you like a house cat does. Just to look at them, he is the same size. We've got two cats. As a, yeah. Um, oh yeah. He's exactly the same size as Joey, pretty much. Isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Patterns are beautiful. Though. You're crazy. You're crazy. <laughs> yeah, I love uh, the spots in the back of their ears, those are called false eyes. So it's to look like eyes so if a predator sneaks up behind them, I think they're being watched. <laughs> and that is a characteristic that house cats do not have. Oh, you've got some ups there. You've got some ups. Oh. <laughs> you take it? I'll let it go for you. No? So you guys are lucky because. Almost the last two weeks, my 10 o'clock tours have not seen him. He's like, yeah, it's nap time. You can go get some lunch now, maybe? So Rocco is a quadamundi, which is a close relative to a raccoon. Um, and they are native to Central and South America as well. So they're kind of, they're all over the place. They're doing pretty well. Um, and they get into everything, just like our raccoons do here. So he's got some pretty impressive nails and teeth. And my favorite part on him is his little nose. It goes about 60 degrees each direction, so he can root up everything. Uh, kind of like a pig. Great sense of smell as well. What's up, Rocco? How's it going, buddy? A little sleepy? Maybe? <laughs> um, we got the call to take him in because somebody actually did have him as a house pet. Um, they had their permits to have him, which is good. But, unfortunately, Florida Fish and Wildlife stepped in and said, Hey, we're not renewing your permits. You can't keep them anymore. And they don't do that just for no reason. 
can fly. <laughs> grab some of those back legs and just come up. You coming? So much work, isn't it? We <laughs> 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 could get some water. Good morning. Here's a little drink. Georgie you wanted me to show you this little lizard. Oh, such a small, cute lizard. In comparison to what we're about to meet. How's it all going so far, Georgie? I'm absolutely loving it. I think we're only like, not even halfway through. And we've met? And we've met a skunk, um, an owl, some cats. We've got Joffrey's cats, Coda Mundi, so much. It's amazing. Um, obviously he doesn't have tape on his mouth. Don't snuggle him. <laughs> Kiss him. Some people try that stuff. So there you go. He likes his head held a little bit higher there. So you want to drop the tail a little bit. I'll give him a little head rub for you. If he likes you. And there you go. You hey, got buddy. yourself a little alligator. <laughs> so soft as well. Yeah. Yeah. Their belly is rough. almost like the snake. Yeah. And then all these bumps on their back are actually individual bones called scoops. Wow. The same thing that turtle shells are made out of. So it keeps them really protected. The bigger they get, the bigger and stronger that those get as well. Well, little teeth. <laughs> little teeth are still little razors in him. Never ruined it though. Have you not? Nope. Nope, he knows. We have a, a pretty good relationship and he enjoys his head rub, so he just hangs out. I can't believe how soft the, the belly is. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> are you going to hold him? Yeah, I think yeah. I'm going to have to. Yeah. Alright, you ready? Yeah. The tail? Tail. Under the arms? Now I now that you're holding him, I'm gonna I'm just gonna throw this one out there. He's much more dangerous than the snake, just saying. Uh, <laughs> give him a but kiss. He's jokes. fine too, right? You could just take your finger off the snake and do that. Oh no, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing great. And he's a great alligator. That's amazing. Right? It's amazing, yeah. The eyes are incredible. It's... Oh yeah, they're beautiful. I don't know what I expected when I when I held him. It looked like a rough, leathery. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can almost feel kind of muscles moving as well, and like feel uh, the... very. And that tail is just all power. Yeah. Like... They can actually they swim so much, obviously, with it, uh, but they can get their whole body out of the water if they need to with that tail. <laughs> amazing, yeah. <laughs> Good job. You guys want to give him, give him a little back rub too? You, oh, can, you yeah. can go for the head if you want. We're about to the head, just there. <laughs> yeah, he really likes if you see these two little, little grooves right there. <laughs> Look at his like, eyes closed. Yeah, <laughs> that's like his favorite. Oh, big guy. Yeah. I don't have the alligator touch, <laughs> but. <laughs> oh, you do. And then, do you notice when he opens his eyes, he's got a little eyelid that goes side yeah. to side mm. as well. He's got a third eyelid, it's called a nictating membrane. So that's like his goggles when he's underwater. He uh, uses that eyelid to see. Wow. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so he can watch me just as well above the water or below it when, when he's in there. Hey right, buddy, you wanna go back to your nap? Take a little nap in the pond. That was amazing. Oh. Oh, I know this place is called Amazing Animals, but I don't think I'd be so amazed. <laughs> but I'm very amazed. So three different species all hanging out together. I call it a South America exhibit because they're all named to South America. Um, so if you look up in the box real quick while you're peeking his oh. little head out, oh, yeah. he's a cow monkey. <laughs> he likes to snuggle in the box all day long. He is a nocturnal primate, so he wakes up at night, runs all around while the rest of them all sleep. Uh, and then uh, the cavies that are on the ground, you can see mom, we are sending her two babies right there. They're only a couple of weeks old. And then dad is Pat, who just got up, and then the other little guy is Pete, we got him at the end of the summer. So they're uh, in the rodent family, very skittish little rodents. So mom there, Patty, um, someone actually ended up getting her first as a pet and thought she was this cute little thing. I'm sure she was probably little, like little babies. And let me tell you, when they grow up and kick really hard and they're super quick. Mm. And they're rodent, they poop a lot. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.
She acts so sweet, but she is she is not when it comes down to it at the end of the day. So when we got her, we knew she needed a friend. So that was the best thing for her. So we got Bayo to be a uh, companion for her. He came to us from another facility. He was actually born into a trip neighbors, raised by them at another zoo. <laughs> but then the females kicked him out. And I think that's what they do in the wild. They are the dominant ones. Males get the boot. Uh, so Bayo needed a new home. She needed a friend. It really worked out perfect. Uh, they do spend a lot of time grooming each other, set marking back and forth, and vocalizing. So she can be more of a lemur now, right? Gascar. And all of them are endangered. Um, and it's because Madagascar is kind of a third world country, you know. They're just yeah, love on her, feed her some of that. She really enjoys back rubs. I guess that's TJ there who he does his own thing. Sometimes he participates, sometimes he doesn't. Um, he was actually uh, raised at the club issue in Ohio. He was in a little program they had up there. And they did the whole show last year. So he got to do prior. They did two. Come down here, be a little snowbird. Enjoying <laughs> it. So, uh, He's a little bit more shy because he just didn't have his, uh, you know, too many people. He's kind of old group of trainers that raised him. So we got Penelope to be a friend for him because he's present again. It's very social. Yeah, really love on her. She's a, you get her good, so get, go belly up on you and doing stuff for him. Yeah, I'm going to see what TJ's eating you now. Go on, Georgie. Yeah. Get to town. Yeah, she's like, I'm going to eat this now and she's going to give me back rubs. It's a great life. <laughs> Is that her making the noise? Yes, yes. So they're very vocal, very social animals. In the wild, you can see capybaras in big groups, 10, 20, sometimes over 100 of them. Oh, wow. Together. Um, they're from Central and South America as well. And uh, so, you know, we got Penelope at a young age to be a friend for uh, PJ. We felt that was important for him. And so she got to be raised and just meeting everyone. So she's super socialized. Um, and they are semi-aquatic rodents. So when you feel her, that uh, fur is real coarse. Yeah. Right? When she gets in her bond there, she's super sweet. So it's great for swimming. They've got little webbed feet. Um, they can hold their breath for about five minutes as well. So uh -huh. they love the water. They love rolling in the mud. They just are always chasing each other around, playing, or, or sleeping with each other all day long. Take little nap. And PJ, if you notice the big bump on his face, sucks to his him. So he can uh, he'll rub all over things. To, you know, but let him know if you know how good he smells kind of attract her that way. Oh, uh, you can go belly up. Or you can go belly up, you know, with these. You can really get, really scratch that belly. Oh, you look so good. <laughs> Alright, Bayo, you can go belly up. No, yeah. And not many exotics I would compare it to dogs, but these guys are like a big dog. We actually really enjoy just oh, getting okay. locked on. Do they have a bite? Or they just I've never been there by them. No. Oh, really? No, I, w I would never try to corner them and pick them off or anything. Yeah, then you're... <laughs> and trust me, I mean, PJ, again, he can be a little skittish. And um, there was one time something spooked him. He was laying down and I was laying by him, like, cutting him. And something spooked him. And he got up so quick and took off. And I just got completely knocked over. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's like, oh, that was fun. Maybe I'll lay down too. So she was actually a non-releasable bobcat, which can be kind of found in the wild when she's a little baby. And so she was all alone and abandoned, so they were helping and took her home and raised her for a couple months. They thought they were saving her. Um, again, you can't just take wildlife and keep it unless you're like some facility to do so. Yeah. And even then, it's a lot of, you know, you work with the government and vets, and you gotta, you gotta see what's going on. Hi, Willow. You're waking up. What you doing? Oh, there's a lawnmower. We don't like the sound of the lawnmower. Oh. Um, so we, uh, we got the call to give her a forever home because, unfortunately, she was raised like house cat by people. Um, they did eventually take her to a rehab when she got bigger, and they were like, uh-oh, what, what do we do now with this? Um, so she uh, was getting rehabbed. It took about six months or so for them to go oh, yeah, no, she's not going anywhere. Oh, mm -hmm. We've got seven goats that are super Cute. friendly. Uh, a couple mini pigs. And a mini donkey as well. Are you having a sniff? Oh, honey. <laughs> Nothing to eat there. That's the shortest then. Sometimes I need to give you back. 
Oh, you look sleepy. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and put that right in front of his face. I'll take it for you. Good morning, Lily. Oh, big John. <laughs> we live in the sloth land. Yeah, they definitely do live up to the name sloth. They do sleep about 15 hours a day or so. And they sleep so much because what you guys get to feed them today is going to come out about a month later. Wow. Yeah, so what? they have the slowest metabolism of any mammal. They do eat every single day. They only go to the bathroom once a week, and then it takes a full month to come back out. So they like to just save their energy and sleep all day, digest their meals, uh, wake up at night, eat a little bit, and then go back to bed. You want to feed her? Thank you. You got some bedheads going on there, lady. Uh, speed the female. He's the male. Let's see. Yep. Speedy came over here a lot faster than I thought. Yes. You got that? Yes. People are usually surprised. They can move <laughs> quite quickly when they want to. Again, they just like to save that energy to digest their food. They can actually move at a decent space, uh, pace. So uh, it's a big misconception that sloths are just going to sleep and snuggle you all the time. Um, in fact, they do have a lot of predators they're quite vulnerable to. So they like to spend 90% of their life upside down in the trees really incognito they actually grow moss and algae in their fur they get rained on so much and they're brown and green they hope they can just leave them alone they yeah. don't want to be seen they don't want to be bothered um so that's why with these guys here um i don't even pick them up they don't want to be they uh have uh, a predator uh the harpy eagle can actually pick them right off of the trees so getting grabbed and picked up can be terrifying to the sloth and uh we like to let it be their choice so they know if they want to wake up they can and they, they're going to get their snacks for it but if they don't want to they don't have to um, it's completely their choice and then if you notice when he takes that they've got some pretty impressive teeth as well so those two little ones on each side all of them are actually molars they only have 18 teeth and the way they grind them shapes them because they don't have enamel so those two on each side are like little steak knives they stay very sharp it's great for breaking off food and it's also great for defense so i have seen an angry sloth in action they will swing down grab you and bite you before you even knew what happened they are very quick, very powerful when they need to be because they have to defend themselves. Um, and yeah, most people are like, what? No, they don't move. I'm like, oh no, they, they do, they can. Um, they've got to survive in the wild still. So um, again, we just see all time for you. I'm going to give her that piece she's done with that one. She's conflicted there too. And that uh, one is kind of a fun thing on them because they do uh, sleep all day. They have better hearing, hearing and uh, 
smell. So it's got little secret units underneath that fur. You see them? Uh -huh. Yeah, so they can hear us really well. Um, and that kind of makes up for their lack of eyesight being nocturnal. Oh, thank you. He's going to turn it around. He likes the leafy green uh, first. Love it first. He's very spoiled. Oh. Are we gonna go for it? That's a good boy. Half the time when he gets yeah, that's what I thought. He's like, no, I don't. You're gonna, you're gonna do it, okay. Yeah, he's gonna stop it. Here, here, buddy. I know it broke a little bit. He holds it. He's very slow. Half the time he just throws that end on the ground. He's like, I don't want the crunchy part, I want the green part. Yeah, he's set. He texts me up, I do love that. He saw it. Yeah, now I do like to say people as well. Of course, so we really, again, hope when you guys meet our animals up close and personal, then it makes you think more about the impact that you make on the environment. And another big thing is the reduce, reuse, recycle. I think it's mm -hmm. something we all hear about, but we have to do a better job of actually doing. Um, you know, all the single-use plastics that we use all the time and just not being too sustainable for our ecosystems. It really adds up if we all play a little bit of a better role. And I think uh, people meet in sloths, they love sloths. So. I think it inspires people to make sure, you know, we say no to those plastic bags and plastic straws and water bottles and making sure we're being more reusable with everything. Nice. There you go. <laughs> you want to pet him on the back too? Pet on the back? I'm not. I would similarly name it. There you go. <laughs> He's enjoying his lettuce. <laughs> He's a good boy. <laughs> She's about 13 now. Um, they were just exhibit sloths, so that's why, again, I don't hold them. But in the wild, they can live about 20 years. In human care, they can actually live 30 to 40 years. So hopefully we'll have, we'll have quite a while to go with these guys. Um, they are male, female. It's completely up to them. If they want to make a baby, we would not be ha are, uh, sad about that. I would uh, love to see a little baby sloth, but uh, again, they do everything slow. Gestation is about 10 months long with the sloth, so time will tell. They've only been together for a little over a year now, so. Maybe one of these days we'll pop out a baby, right, Luke? Um, they are excellent swimmers, so they can actually hold their breath for over 40 minutes. Wow, wow. And again, that slow metabolism, they can actually drop their heartbeat. Um, they don't need as much oxygen being, um, having a slow metabolism, so they can swim for a lot longer than people think as well. And then their closest relative is actually ant eaters and armadillos. And sloths, they're all in the same family. They're all from South America, and it's actually their vertebrae structure. Scientists have uh, classified them together. <coughs> Did you not want the ends too? You're being a picky sloth. <laughs> He's like, they're very spoiled here. I love them. Wouldn't have it any other way, really. I'm assuming having the large claws kind of takes a lot of that energy from having to hold themselves exactly. on. Yes, that takes like nothing for them to do. In fact, they say they still die holding on like that. Oh, really? Um, that's how little. So they're just perfectly hooked on, almost like a coat hanger, right? <laughs> <laughs> you nearly finished. Yeah, she's like, I'm going back to bed. She wants to <laughs> you, oh, do you want another piece? She is really sensitive with sound. So the neighbor mowing uh, next door, she's like, mm, I'm going to go back in this box real quick here. Just go back to bed and act like I don't hear it. <laughs> yeah, we'll let them finish that last piece there. Get some love on them a little bit more, and then we'll sneak on out. Let them. What's this sloth like? Eating and sleeping every day. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> and then Kiwi, he's either in the box or oh, there he is. Hi Kiwi! What's up buddy? The Kiwi's on the other side of the, the tunnel. That's oh, there <laughs> Hi Kiwi! <laughs> so they're really cute. People get them a lot as pets because they are little and adorable. If you want this, come get it. Let me get that lettuce. Um, but they're related to raccoons and aquatic animals. So people think they're monkeys. Uh, 250 pounds full grown and can live over 100 years. Wow. So getting a tortoise as a pet is like having uh, a longer than lifetime commitment to have, right? So kids get them, they're cute little tiny things, and again, they don't really realize that you're going to have to put them in your will and pass them down to your kids and grandkids. Yeah. Um, and you guys can pet them on the shelf. We uh, unfortunately got all of these guys because people either A, let them go, or B, put them in their backyards and don't realize what good diggers they are. So they're like the burrow. They don't swim at all like turtles. They're a little different. So they'll dig right out of your yard. So yeah, we get a lot of calls for them roaming around Florida, which again, it's not great because they're from Africa. So we try to take them in, give them a good proper home, find other places to take them as well so that we have room to keep taking in more when we get calls. 
Um, cause we probably get called for, I'd say about 20 or so a year on average. Wow. Yeah. But I love them. They just, they're a lot. They go through a ton of produce. They've already had two huge bags of lettuce for the morning. <laughs> and, uh, you would, you would not know that they, you know, they were there, they haven't eaten here. They're quite fast moving as well. They, like, yes, <laughs> yes. That's what I tell you. Like, they, they can go when they want to. <laughs> and they actually can be pretty mean to one another. They'll, they'll ram each other right over. Can they feel? Or do yes. they know if they can? Yep, like, that, that shell has nerve endings. So it's like a, I say it's like a big bone. So it oh, okay. with them, it's all attached to them. Um, but they also use like a solar panel. They can collect nutrients from the sun to make sure they're growing nice and big and strong. And then yes, it does have nerve endings. They can feel when you scratch them. Sometimes, I don't know if you've ever seen videos of like turtles like scratching their butts when they're <laughs> moving. They can feel it. They enjoy their, their back scratches. Oh my God, wasn't that great? Did you enjoy it as much as I did? Yeah, that was really, really good. It was so immersive. You got to pet so many. There's farmyard animals, which you saw. You get to pet them. You get to hold an alligator, stroke a sloth. What was your best bit? The alligator, yeah. I, I was so scared. You'll probably see in the video, but I was so scared. <laughs> but once it was there, it was fine. Yeah. And then when she told me it could bite my finger off, well, that didn't help. <laughs> yeah, four people to say that but, um, too. <laughs> yeah, really, really good. Really recommend that to, yeah. to everyone to go because um, they've got a right, a really cool little operation going on there. The conservation um, work that they do. Yeah, well, and the amount of work they must have to put in to maintain that. Like, it, it doesn't look like many animals, but that's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah it is. Um, and care and attention for each animal. And you could see the love there between the animals and her, and, and, mm. and it was really good. She was saying that a lot of the animals, I don't know if it picked up in the recordings, um, a lot of them are pets. So exotic pets raised by humans, yeah. and they're deemed non-releasable because they're too trusting to humans. And you can tell when we went over to the lemurs and that one came straight over to us and was like meh, 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 chatting away like <laughs> because it thinks it's one of us and it's it is so sweet but she was also saying it's um they've got chickens and they use the chicken eggs to feed the lizards and they kind of rotate things so to keep it sustainable so i think it's really good and the work they do is incredible there so that's it for this little vlog for, from Amazing Animals Inc. Um, we'll put the link in below for you so you can have a look and even donate. Um, but we really do recommend it. Georgie loved it. I loved it. Yeah. You should definitely check it out if you ever come this way. Um, and it's only about half an hour drive from Disney property. How much um, does it cost for a private tour, Dan? So it's $40 each. Um, and yeah, they accept all cards and PayPal. Um, and any donation as well um, so it's, yeah it's really good so thanks for watching um, don't forget to comment like subscribe did I get that right you got that right I think <laughs> thanks for watching and we'll see you later